Hello, hello everyone and uh, this is Robert Mwando here with Edify. Uh, today I would like to talk to you about what I have called the pandemic. But before we dive into the deep of things, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this, this, this day. Thank you, Lord, that this is the day you've made. We are glad and we rejoice in it. Lord, even as we uh, talk about this issue that is uh, devastating many human, human beings at such a time like this, I pray that you would give me wisdom and insight so that uh, this word will be able to uh, edify somebody today. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, uh, so uh, today we are talking about what I've called the pandemic, and uh, the whole world is currently focused on the corona pandemic, or shall I say, pandemic, and has ignored so many other evils devastating the human race. One in point is the pornography pandemic. I have simply called it pandemic. Recently, I read an article of a parent who discovered that. 30% of their monthly internet data uh, was being used to visit pornography sites. And guess who was visiting these sites? Their son, who is barely nine years. Incidentally, through a pop-up while playing a famous online game. In 2014, the Parliament of Uganda passed an anti-pornography law. A headline from one publication read, Uganda's government is obsessed with porn and policing morality. The choice of words in this headline, like many other foreign media outlets, connoted a disgust in the laws of a sovereign state. By passing this law, Uganda had opened herself to a war with those who will do everything in their midst to defend immorality. It was morality versus immorality. Fast forward, August 16th, 2021, the Uganda Constitutional Court quashed the pornography law. What does this mean? That pornography is okay? That it has no effect on individuals, families, communities, and nations? To lay such a claim would mean being oblivious of the glaring devastation pornography does to people. Pornography hurts adults, children, couples, families, and society. Among adolescents, pornography hinders the development of a healthy sexuality, and among adults, it distorts sexual attitudes and social realities. In families, pornography use leads to marital dissatisfaction, infidelity, separation, and divorce. Here are some mind-blowing statistics about pornography and the church. These statistics are mostly drawn from US-based research. Number one, over 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. Two, around 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic. A porn addiction affects about 5 to 8% of adults. And there are around 42 million porn websites, which totals to around 370 million pages of porn. The porn industry's revenue annually is more than the NFL, the NBA, the MLB combined. It is also more than the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBS. An estimated whooping $16.9 billion each year in the United States alone. 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. Pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. Number seven, 11 is the average age that a child is first exposed to porn. And 94% of the children will see porn by the age of 14 years. And again, 56% of American divorces involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. 70% of Christian youth, youth pastors report that they have been at least one teen that comes to them 
for help in dealing with pornography in the past 12 months. Let's go to church statistics. 68% of church-going men and over 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. Of young Christian adults, 18 to 24 years old, 76% actively search porn. Now, these statistics are just mind-boggling. 59% of pastors said that married men seek help for porn use. And 33% of women aged 25 and under search for porn at least once a month. Now, only 13% of self-identified Christian women say they never watch porn. That means 87% of Christian women have actually watched porn. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say they watch porn at least once a month. Now, again, when we go to church circles, 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation. And 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church. All these statistics tell us something. So should church be concerned about this porn pandemic? What does the Bible say about pornography? Well, while pornography is a relatively new thing, the Bible generally addresses it as sexual immorality. Let me define sexual immorality very quickly. This is the interpersonal activity involving sex organs that does not conform to God's revealed laws governing sexuality. In simple terms, sexual immorality is essentially the engagement in sexual acts outside the sanctity of marriage. Does pornography fit into this definition? By the mere fact that pornography is intended to stimulate sexual excitement outside the sanctity of marriage, it definitely falls in the category of sexual immorality. Many sexual perversions co-occur as a result of porn addiction, including masturbation, homosexuality, lesbianism, fornication, adultery, voyeurism, bestiality, and others. Apostle Paul had this to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. He says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And also in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 8, it says, It's God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable and not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or a sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now, clearly we can see that pornography is not allowed in the word of God. In part two of this episode, I will delve further into the effects of pornography and practical steps to finding freedom. Keep watching this space. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more. 
God bless you.